The Holkers, the Shindes, the Gaikwads and the Pawars were all instrumental in the Maratha expansion across the Narmada River. In January 1758 after the victorious campaign of Sindhkhed, Jankoji Shinde had marched north. He had to focus on Punjab. Dattaji Shinde headed north soon after. The Peshwa had ordered Jankoji and Dattaji to march into Bengal to secure control over the Hindu pilgrimage sites of Kashi, Ayodhya and Prayag. which were located in the provinces of Shuja Uddala and also to secure new territories for revenue in the earlier campaign led by Raghunath Rao Najib Khan Rohila was spared at the mercy of Mallar Rao Holkar Mallar Rao Holkar had thought that he could use Najib as a pawn in the north for the Maratha cause but destiny had other plans who knew that this mistake could cost the Marathas the lives of an entire generation In the summer of 1758, Dattaji camped on the banks of Yamuna River at a place called Majnu ka Tila. Najib Khan Rohila offered Dattaji to build a bridge over the Ganga River for the Maratha armies to cross into the Awadh and Bengal as a sign of renewed peace. The Peshwa had earlier sent a message to eliminate Najib Khan as soon as possible, but the rush to enter Bengal and Awadh softened Dattaji's approach as he accepted Najib Khan's peace offering considering the help he may offer to build these bridges there were no fixed bridges over the river crossings like we see today pontoon bridges often helped the armies cross in and out of the duab the area between the ganga and yamuna river najib khan rohila was skilled in building these pontoon bridges he had been doing it for some years now assigning najib khan the duty to build these bridges dattaji shinde headed for a pilgrimage of gadamukteshwar With a new lease of life from the Marathas, Najib Khan Rohila now set his plans in motion. First, he mobilized his army to a safe spot on the banks of the river Ganga and began installing artillery all around the garrison of Shukartal. On the other hand, he kept Dattaji Shinde at rest by making false promises that he'll be completing the bridge soon. Unfortunately, Dattaji Shinde did not see his betrayal coming. Najib had been hatching his own plan for a while now. He had attempted to unite northern warlords against the Marathas and now he found a mighty rival who could challenge the Maratha power with an equally strong army and military skills the invader Ahmad Shah Abdali The treacherous plot of Najib Khan Rohila to invite Ahmad Shah Abdali got the nod of approval from the Mughal emperor Alamgir Sani and his begum Malika Zamani He quickly sent his brother Sultan Khan as his envoy to Abdali inviting him to start at once for India Ahmad Shah Abdali divided his army into two contingents. The first contingent led by his commander Jahan Khan proceeded towards Punjab via the Khyber Pass. He led the second contingent himself marching via the Bolan Pass arriving at Shikarpur near the Indus River. From there he traveled along the Indus River and reached Dera Ghazi Khan via Kot Mithan. He dispatched a smaller army towards Multan. Bapuji Trimbak leading a small maratha army at the garrison of multan had to quickly retreat and move to lahore in november 1759 upon seeing the massive afghan army led by jahan khan the marathas at atak also withdrew to lahore jahan khan then recaptured atak abdali himself traveled through dera ismail khan kalabag and finally reached atak now the united armies rapidly surged through the punjab crossing the rivers of Indus, Jhelum, Chenab and quickly reached Lahore via Sialkot. Finally in October 1759, Abdali crossed the Ravi River and marched on the fort of Lahore. The troops of Tukoji Holkar Sabaji Shinde could not withstand the Afghan onslaught and they all retreated back to the vicinity of Delhi. With brute force, the Afghans conquered the remaining area of Punjab till the city of Rahim Yar Khan. With the exception of a handful Sikh held territories, The entire Punjab was now under the Afghan control. The Marathas were now exiled from Punjab. Before leaving for this campaign, Abdali had sent letters to the men who supported his cause. The Mughal emperor Alamgir Sani, Najib Khan Rohila, and the Rajput kings Madho Singh and Vijay Singh. The gist of the letter was that I have sent Jahan Khan ahead and I'll follow him soon. Pledge your support to my cause and ensure that the promised revenue from India is sent annually. Madho Singh had been part of pretty much every anti-Maratha coalition since 1754. 
He had appointed Bakshi Rao Sahit Singh as the diplomat to Taimur Shah's court in Lahore to express his devotion to the Durrani cause. When Punjab was in turmoil, a bloody incident took place in Delhi. The Wazir Imad ud-Dawla tricked the emperor out of his palace with the pretext of paying respects to a peer and brutally assassinated him. On 29th of November, he installed Kamabaksha's grandson Muhiyul Millat as the emperor of Delhi, bestowing upon him the title of Shah Jahan, making him the third emperor of the same title. All this so that he could retain power and control over Delhi. Back near the Ganga River, Najib Khan had built the bridge in the Shukartal area. But in Dattaji Shinde's absence, Najib did not allow the Maratha troops to cross over the bridge and instead he used the bridge to bring his troops into the Duab. Noticing this betrayal, Dattaji Shinde marched upon him. Sabaji Shinde by now had joined Dattaji's army in the Duab and informed him about the developments in Punjab. A fierce battle ensued on the banks of the Ganga River. Dattaji Shinde himself was seriously injured. But with the arrival of reinforcements for the Shinde army, Najib Khan immediately withdrew across the river to recoup. Dattaji then planned to eradicate Najib Khan once and for all. He dispatched Govind Pant Bundele with a 10,000 strong army across the river to cut off Najib Khan's supplies. Govind Pant crossed the Ganga river at Haridwar and marched on to Rohilkhand. Govind Pant then penetrated through the Rohila region and marched on the Rohila armies. A ferocious battle took place at Jalalabad between Govind Pant Bundele and the Rohilas. Govind Pant's army managed to defeat the Rohila troops, but to Najib Khan's surprise, Anubgir Gosai from Shuja Uddawla's ranks came to his rescue. The Gosai army joined the Rohilas with 5000 strong troops. Hence Govind Pant Bundela had to retreat and return across the Ganga river in disappointment. Seeing the combined army of the Rohilas and the Gosais, Dattaji Shinde realized that it would be difficult to face them in the Rohilkhand. There was also the imminent threat of the Afghan forces uniting with the Rohila troops. He then decided to retreat to the west bank of the Yamuna River. After quickly crossing the Yamuna, Dattaji set north to check on Abdali's whereabouts. He dispatched his family and other heavy artillery to Delhi. Dattaji then deputed Sabaji Shinde and Jankoji Shinde on the west bank of the Yamuna River in the vicinity of Thanesar. Abdali's armies by now had reached near the cities of Banur and Chhat after crossing Sarhind. Jankoji Shinde with his army intercepted a section of Afghan army to the north of Thanesar. He attempted to raid the troop but he was outnumbered as the reinforcements arrived for the Afghans quickly than he anticipated. He withdrew south after facing casualties. On 24th of December 1759, Sabaji Shinde came across scouting troops from the Afghan army at Thanesar. A skirmish broke out. Sabaji Shinde was leading the charge against the Afghans. The battle could not be pursued to end due to the lack of daylight. The Afghan army did not engage the next day but quickly moved north, trying to ditch the Maratha tail. Dattaji Shinde reached Thanesar the next morning and noticed the Afghan army, which had already started crossing the Yamuna river at the Budia crossing into the Duab. The Afghans were assisted by Najabat Khan Rohila from Kunjpura to cross over the Yamuna River. Dattaji then deputed Sabaji Shinde and Jankoji Shinde to attack the remaining ranks of the Afghans on the west bank of Yamuna. On 29th of December, a large army of the Marathas again marched onto the Afghans on the banks of the Yamuna River. They could not stop the armies from crossing. The rear guard of the Marathas was instead attacked by the Afghan cavalry led by Shah Pasan Khan chasing them away. Finally, the Durrani army had joined the Rohila chief, Najib Khan. The disaster that was to be averted now became the dreadful reality. Dattaji Shinde now quickly rushed south to defend Delhi. He knew that Abdali and Najib Khan would cross the river at any moment and now try to attack Delhi. In order to hold them back, he strategically placed his troops to protect all the river crossings in the vicinity of Delhi. This plan would help Dattaji quickly know the enemy's location no matter from where they cross. But the disadvantage of this move was that the Shinde troops were divided. On 10th January 1760, the combined troops of the Afghans and the Rohilas crossed the Yamuna river at four places simultaneously. It was the auspicious day of Makar Sankranti for the Hindus. The battle broke out early in a cold, foggy morning. The Rohila and the Durrani troops crossed the river and opened fire at once. Sabaji with a small number of troops intercepted the group of Rohilas 
and tried to hold them back but his troop could not withstand the onslaught the rohilas were soon joined by the afghans bayaji shinde who came to the rescue faced heavy gunfire from a small islet in the river he fell in combat when a musket shot knocked him dead off his horse upon hearing this fateful news dattaji shinde quickly rode to the buradi ghat he was accompanied by yashwantrao jagdai the afghan army hiding in the bushes ambushed them and opened fire while dattaji was fighting bravely on horseback yashwantrao jagdai was hit by a bullet and was killed instantly dattaji dismounted quickly and rushed in to rescue he was subject to heavy gunfire and was seriously injured a bullet hit him in his right rib cage his men attempted to save him rajaram chopdar was helping dattaji stand on his feet at that instance the rohila chief najib khan and his spiritual guru kutub shah arrived at the place of action the chronicle of sadashiv rao named bhau saibanchi bakhar narrates dattaji's tragic end melodramatically when najib khan teasingly asked dattaji so chief would you still fight me dattaji had replied courageously if i survive i'll continue to fight even more bachenge to aur bhi ladenge, ladenge.